So my brothers and I, we, we were seriously lucky. We were really lucky to have the father that we had. He was, he was kind of a punk. He, he, I remember going on a hike with him when we were young and we, it was like a, one of those school hikes where you, you go up the mountain, all the parents are there with their little kids. We were somewhere in a junior school. And we got to this river. And um, the river was pretty full. It wasn't a big river. It was running pretty fast and all the dads were stopped and they were carrying their kids backwards and forwards across the river because the kids were small. But my old man, he had spotted, he spotted the, some high grass on the other side of the river. So he just went and he called the three of us. We each came to him and he took us by the scruff of our necks and he just threw us over the river into the, into the bush on the other side. And the other parents, I remember the look on their faces. What? How could he do that to these poor children? So abusive. Could have thrown them into a thicket of snakes. And I, I remember people looking at him kind of in a strange way at the time. And, and that, for my brothers and I, that was just normal. That is how we were brought up. We were brought up to, to embrace wiping out. Wiping out is such a, a cool phrase because wiping out is, means that it's out of your control. You attempt to do something. You attempt to do it properly. But a wipeout is, you're gone. You're gone. It's out of your control. Your arms and your legs are going all over the show. Here's a, here's a, here's a good example. So this is, this is our hero and mentor and an icon of of my family is is this man here Keith Burtish as a European water ski champion pushing the limits that's him entirely upside down getting ready to wipe out with with style and we were like wow amazing I want to fly like that upside down and wipe out and get stitches in my feet and that's the other thing, if you don't have those stitches or those scars from wiping out more and more in your life, because that should be a, that should be a goal for everyone growing up, is yes, you have to be careful and you have to manage the situation and plan and everything, but you've got to go in the end. You've got to take a leap. You've got to jump. You've got to be thrown across the river on a regular basis. And that's the, that's the elixir of life. And that's the thing that not only builds your resiliency, but enables you to have a far richer and more extraordinary life, which is something that, that's ingrained in, in my brothers and I. And part of that is not just being doing it for yourself. It's about how do you, how do you inspire other people to do the same thing and to actually live and get over their, the issues they may have and create a whole bunch of videos in my crazy little studio, teaching people how to wipe out better. Here's a giant wave. Whoa, it's a giant wave. And you're over here, about to get smashed. So how do you, how do you work that? How are you gonna best deal with the wipeout that you're gonna go through? And how are you gonna generate a different mindset? about how to handle it and potentially, and again, come out better than you were before with a couple of scars. Cool. So when I was diagnosed with brain cancer, it was, it was like the biggest wipeout I've ever experienced. Smashed by this, this giant wave. It was so giant, I actually drew it on the blackboard, but it, you can't see it because it's so big, the line goes over the roof. Um, it, it just, it, I mean, cancer is quite a thing. It's kind of similar to what the world's going through right now, where we all hit by this, this massive wave that then kind of pulls us down and we, we struggle to get back up and then, bah, then another wave comes and smashes into us. When I was diagnosed, it was like, emergency surgery, we've got to get that tumor out of your brain within 72 hours. Otherwise, 
you're gonna pass out. So the first thing I did was I grabbed a piece of paper and I did a sketch and I wrote down, I must, I've got to prepare myself for, for double micro brain surgery into the back of my brain. I believe in the mind body connection. I, I, I love solving challenges with creativity and I know how to handle fear. So I put all of that stuff together and I did a sketch. The bouncy brain. I imagined that this bouncy brain of mine was going to be flexible enough to handle whatever they were going to put into my brain, whatever they were going to stick in there, their little utensils, my bouncy brain was going to bounce right back. I saw it as almost like creativity personified, is that when the bouncy, when any stress happens to the bouncy brain, it doesn't shrink, it doesn't become this inflexible object that's, that's, that's prone to having bits broken off it. It becomes flexible, becomes agile, like creativity. It even had a sound, and the sound was and I made the sound. All the way while I was being pushed into surgery, I was lying on the pallet as they were pushing me in, and I was going I looked up and saw the one guy pushing the trolley, the nurse pushing it. He looked at his buddy and was like, ah, ah, this guy. He's going boing, 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 what? Maybe that's why we're getting that boing out of his brain. Anyway, that was the beginning of my ride with cancer. How I started to use creativity to immerse myself in my own healing. So I started taking, making games playful. But we have, as creative people, we have this incredible talent that other people don't have. They could have, but nothing in their daily lives demands that they become kind of creative thinkers. But as creative people, we have this ability to take something that's invisible and then make it visible. And once it's visible, then you can bounce it, you can stretch it, you can twist it, you can flip it upside down, you can you can bounce it around off the walls, you can throw it to your buddy, he can throw it back, you can squish it with your foot. It's suddenly something that you can deal with. And that's what I did at the onset of, hmm, well, how could I make my whole journey something that I could engage with and something that I could kind of screw with and get on top of and make fun? Because fear, fear doesn't like fun. Fear doesn't like fun at all. And what I've learned from being a creative director is the more fun people are having, the more innovative work that they produce, the better ideas, the more in because it's a free space. And when humans are in a free space, the opposite of pulling back, they open up and they allow ideas to flow. I actually did all these sketches of other people going through cancer at the same time as me. And what I noticed was something very simple, was that the majority of people who were dealing with their cancer, they hadn't been given a role. So they were in this helpless state. And when you're in this helpless state, then our immune functions are compromised, making it harder to fight the very disease that's caused you to be in this helpless state. It's kind of this, this vicious cycle. So I thought, wow, well, hang on a second. Why don't we change the user journey for cancer patients? What a, what a challenge that would be to use creativity and design and filmmaking to generate a user journey that was more engaging than it is. That's when I realized, okay, my job on the planet is to use creativity to help humans better deal with the challenges that they face. When you get a challenge, you look at what you've got. What are your resources? How are you going to best navigate past the challenge or with the challenge? How are you going to, how are you going to use the stimulus enabled by the challenge to help you generate something that can feed you? in a way that makes you feel better. Think about any of the challenges that you have in your life. When you start playing with them, it's a different game. It's, it's, it's not happening to you. So one of the things I say is like, you know, cancer, cancer didn't happen to me. I happened to cancer. And cancer still, they can't get away. Cancer can't get away from me. I got away from cancer, but now I'm back. I'm like, ha I'm back. And I'm here to empower other people 
to beat you too, you bugger. To get smashed. And that's how you not need to start playing with your own challenges, the things that scare you. Those are the things you dive into. So think about the things that you really fear. And until tomorrow, think about them. And think about ways that you can debunk their fear. Hmm. Hi everyone, I'm going into my annual MRI scan to check on my um, brain cancer. And um, MRI scans are really scary because they make that really horrible sound. Bar, 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 bar. So I thought, why not change that and use the sounds of the MRI machine and turn them into anthemic tracks that would build resilience. So I contacted Professor Loudon Stearns from the Berklee College of Music in Boston, and we have a whole album of anthemic tracks using the sounds of the MRI machine, like this one. So now you can dance your way back to hell, right, from the Cancer Dojo app. Let's do this. So thanks, one club and one show. You guys rock. I love, I love collaborating with, with groups of humans who want to make other people harder to kill. Awesome. This is the last one. You've made it through. You're very resilient. Well done. So happy people are harder to kill. They are. Happy people are harder to kill because our immune functions are stronger. Join me. Join me at Convertish.com. Yes. See you soon. Bye.